it was okay. Hey guys, it's Vangelis. I just got back from seeing Clash of the Titans, and I want to share with you my experiences of the evening. I have other things I'd like to vlog about, like a package I got, and about uh, Questionnaire, and about Review 100, and about all kinds of things, but uh, I want to do this now because not only uh, is it fresh on my mind, but I also went to a place across the street called Fu, Asian Street Market, and I got me some chow mein. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about my chow mein whilst I'm talking about the movie. So, I go to see Clash of the Titans with my friends Jacob and Brendan. You may recognize them from Questionnaire. Clash of the Titans. Uh, we get there, and I hear that it's in 3D, which I didn't know about until we were heading to the theater. And I thought to myself, I'd kind of rather see this in 2D, because I am of the, b the belief that, that Clash of the Titans probably was not shot in 3D, and thus probably has Alice in Wonderland levels of 3D, which I did not see. I haven't seen the movie yet. Waiting for the DVD. And I heard that the Alice in Wonderland 3D felt very much like 3D that was added on after the fact. Not bad. Trailers start up, and then suddenly halfway through the trailers I have to put my 3D glasses on over top of my glasses. Doesn't work! Very well. But I don't get headaches from the 3D. I kind of just balance them on the uh, outer ridge of my normal glasses and it sort of works. So, um... Uh, 3D trailer start. I think, great, I'll get to see the Tron 2 trailer. Not so lucky. First up, I get to see a trailer for Step Up 3D. Never before have I seen so many people do a forward flip towards a 3D camera. I love that the 3D camera technology is being utilized for Step Up 3D. <laughs> Did you ever know that dancing to some is an art form and some people have to learn it? But some people are born to dance. We're like a group of warriors. I don't know. <laughs> what a waste of technology. So then another 3D trailer starts up, and I think to myself, finally, Tron 2. Not so lucky. Oh, <laughs> delicious. I am not greeted by Tron 2. I am greeted by what appears to be another party movie shot on a 3D camera. And I'm about to go like, man, how much do these cameras cost? But no. All of a sudden... That was my coke. There is a shot of something coming up under the water, and I thought, ooh, are they going to remake Jaws with a 3D camera? Because, provided it's campy enough, I would watch that. But no, it's Piranhas. Piranhas 3D. Your technology at work, James Cameron, I assume. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. So, <laughs> Piranhas 3D starts up, and then lo and behold, none other than Christopher Lloyd is in it. Which now makes me want to see the movie, because he, he has exactly one line in the trailer, and it was glorious. It was interspersed between shots of crazy CG piranha packs, but he's like, Piranhas travel in packs! The first bite draws the blood! The blood draws the pack! I have to see Christopher Lloyd going Christopher Lloyd crazy about piranhas. Seriously. Those are all the 3D trailers I got! I'm trying not to be cynical about 3D technology because I think it can do awesome things. I think that there were several visual components of Avatar that were stunning regardless of any criticisms I have about the storyline. I think the technology could actually go legitimate places. I'm not one of those curmudgeons, guys! But those trailers didn't help my case very much! So the movie starts. I have my 3D glasses on, and for the first part of Clash of the Titans, the 3D is kind of doing something. Then it stops doing anything, but uh, that's kind of how I felt about... <laughs> The effect. I mean, I took them off and on, and I, I realized, you see, Avatar, when I took them off and on, I couldn't see the screen when they were off. I take them off here, parts of the screen are sometimes a little fuzzy, so I kind of think it was tacked on. I'm not sure, though. I didn't make the movie. A lot of the 3D for the first couple minutes of the movie was not bad. I mean, you know, it was 3D things flying around. Uh, but then there were a lot of mountain shots, and it's kind of like, if you didn't shoot it with a 3D camera, there's not that much to do, <laughs> 3D-wise. Um... So Clash of the Titans is all about Greek mythology, and if I'm going to capsulate this without any spoilers, um, I'd say that it was a hypothetically really cool movie that I would love to see again. However, I also learned of something from my friend Jacob, who I went to see the movie with, along with my friend Brendan, who you may know from Questionnaire. Clash of the Titans was submitted in full cut and rejected by the people with money, who then reshot parts of it and assembled a new cut. Let me tell you, the movie feels like it. There are some really cool parts in Clash of the Titans. Like, really cool parts. I really enjoyed myself during parts of Clash of the Titans. I thought to myself, like, man, I'm glad I'm sitting here watching this. Did I mention I'm Asian? However, the movie also felt like a third of the movie was chopped out. And this is because of some reshoots. Now, slight spoiler territory. However, oh, 
this is kind of spicy. If you're really worried about spoilers for Clash of the Titans, I question you. I question you, right now. Answer my question. Why are you worried about spoilers for Clash of the Titans? Anyway, Zeus, at the outset of the movie, who is played to grandiose gloriosity by Liam Neeson, and I very much enjoyed him as Zeus, is very unpleasant in the beginning of the movie. He is clearly the antagonist, and then suddenly he's not. And uh, me and Jacob are kind of figuring that some of these reshoots must have been with Liam Neeson to reshoot all the parts of the movie where Zeus randomly shows up dressed like a monk, suddenly being nice. You see, what the movie did is that it played up this whole thing that Zeus is angry, and he's gonna get Hades to unleash the Kraken to, uh take the beast that slew the titans and knock over Argos to make people worship the gods again. Hades' big secret plan is that'll make people just fear the gods. And while the gods are fueled by love, Hades alone is fueled by fear. And I can kind of dig it, only basically what this meant was that the movie became Zeus versus Hades, and the movie very much presented everything, like Zeus and Hades were the only gods that mattered. Does that sound familiar to you? There's a big friendly god, there's the underworld dwelling evil god! That's really generalizing, and it wasn't I totally like that, but uh, my friend Brendan made that, that analogy, and I was like, you're right! Like, they really took what clearly was gonna be a movie, apparently Zeus was gonna be the antagonist, and he really wasn't. So it feels to me like the people with money went like, oh man, people don't read Greek myths, how are they gonna know who to root for? Let's make Zeus basically into god, it was slightly fallible, and let's make Hades into Satan, because they both rule over dead people! This is where the movie starts to, like, it seems, it hangs together by its seams, don't get me wrong, it doesn't fall apart, it hangs in there, and I still think that it's worth checking out if you're the kind of person who can go to a movie with a sieve, and enjoy the gold nuggets that come out of all the sand. That's the best example I can think of for how bitty the movie felt. Uh, there's other things, like there's a pair of hunters who, as far as I know, never even get named. They're presented as though we should know them. They have moments that make you feel like you missed 30 minutes of them being cool, and then they have a big farewell scene where you think to yourself, didn't you just get here? And why are you acting like I know you? Um, a lot of scenes in this movie feel like there are other scenes that aren't there. And I don't mean this in, you know, the poor writing way. I mean this like it legitimately felt like the movie had pieces cut out. And this isn't like Ninja Assassin where I'm kind of making a metaphor for it. This felt like it literally had pieces of the movie missing. I felt like I was watching uh, a music video at times where I'm seeing cool stuff and I'm thinking to myself, whoa, 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 this is all so cool. I can't wait to see the movie. Wait. There's really cool action sequences. This is stuff with uh, with Perseus's non-biological, non-related non-father. Um, and there's this stuff with giant scorpions, which is awesome. I love the giant scorpions sequence because as someone who doesn't hate the Transformers movie, I will readily admit that uh, the Transformers movies and a lot of other movies are really good at using CG action sequences in a very bewildering way, where it's very hard to follow the action. And I thought that, in in particular, the Scorpion sequence in Clash of the Titans was blocked very well, and I could really tell what was happening because there was a storyline to the action, and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. And this isn't like Revenge of the Fallen, where everyone loved the forest fight scene, and that was it. There were other cool parts in the movie. The Jinns had awesome designs and were done really well. Medusa looked incredible. A lot of the characters maybe were hammy acted a little bit, but they were really memorable performances and really enjoyable performances. And that's why it sucked when they killed everyone at the same time! Basically, all the memorable characters from the Argonaut type Argosian guys and the, the djinn that follows them and everything like that. Really cool characters. The hunters randomly survive. Everyone else goes into, into the underworld to go find Medusa. And uh, in Medusa's lair, and only in Medusa's lair, every supporting character dies! Every last single one! And it's really unsatisfying how most of them die, and it's frustrating how a lot of them die, especially the djinn. He was this badass made out of black magic and living bark who can mentally control giant desert scorpions and has a huge awesome bramble staff with blue flame on the end. Medusa coils him in her tail of snakeness and looks him in the eye and goes like, Rah, I'm gonna turn you to stone. And they make this whole point of going like, Medusa turns only living flesh into stone. You're like, oh, but that djinn is made of wood. He's not living flesh. And the djinn laughs in her face. And she's like, what? 
and you're like, whoa, the djinn's gonna do something awesome, and then the djinn blows himself up, and Medusa is unscathed. It was a waste! As I said, the movie has so many cool parts, but so many frustrating parts! Um, I would really recommend checking it out somehow, somewhere, in a way that makes you comfortable, because as I said, there are so many legitimately cool parts that made me really love the movie when the movie was on a level that I enjoyed, but given the way that the movie was clearly butchered by the producers, or whoever it is that scheduled the reshoots and junked the rough cut of the movie that we will never see because it was junked before it had any visual effects applied and thus cannot simply be released as a director's cut as that would cost a lot of money, it's very sad. The whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, man, I love so much of this. I can pick so much of this apart. But it's not the movie's fault. It doesn't feel like it's the movie's fault at all. It feels like the movie is this, like, wounded, graceful animal that, like, is is crawling through the mud. And I just wanted to reach out and, and, and pick it up and, and give it a hug. Really good stuff in Clash of the Titans. And it's clearly been mauled by the people who decided they needed to reshoot and rewrite huge tracts of the movie. And it's a big, big shame. Check out Clash of the Titans. It's got some great stuff. And check it out knowing that it was ripped to shreds by producers. The best analogy I can make is how the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven is awesome! And then I saw the theatrical cut and I was like, oh, I see how this failed in theaters. Because the theatrical cut of Kingdom of Heaven is awful. It sucks. And the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven is practically a different movie. A good one! Clash of the Titans was very fun, and I think it was it was very fun in part because I knew about the reshoots before I got there. That's all I knew about the movie. As I was watching it, I kind of felt like, oh, oh, I see what happened. Oh, you poor thing. It has such a heart of gold somewhere buried deep beneath all the the, the tacked-on chunks of other movies that are stitched on with, with hemp made from money. It's got a lot of goodness and feels like a lot of other goodness was literally torn from its flesh. And that's why I can say that you might not like Clash of the Titans, but it's hard to deny that there are a lot of pieces of a better movie in there. And I don't really mean that as a negative thing, as I said. I really did dig several parts of Clash of the Titans, but it very clearly suffered for trying to be more than just a rapid sequence of fun action scenes. I still can't get over that. <laughs> Step up 3D. <laughs> Step up 3D! James Cameron blows the mind to the entire world! How does the entire world react? Let's make Step Up 3D! People need more dance movies with 3D glasses, so it looks like people are back flipping into your face. What?! But Clash of the Titans, um, like I said, can't be mean to it. I can, I can say there are problems, but I feel guilty being mean to it because I feel like I haven't been given an opportunity to give it a fair shake. And unfortunately, I don't think any of us will be given that opportunity. It's a shame. Liam Neeson's pretty cool, though. Dude is totally Zeus. I mean, even the ending, man! There's... <laughs> the ending makes no sense with Perseus's whole character arc, and then, like, at the end, you'd think Zeus would be held accountable for something, but no! Zeus actually tries to come out the bigger man! And then he's like, by the way, Zeus's son needs a woman, let me resurrect the dead love interest. And the whole ending sequence, too! Five-minute glorious lead-up to the, the gradual reveal of the, the beautifully designed Kraken, this demonic, chitinous, crab rancor beast! And then it's like, Roosh! Perseus shoots Medusa's face at it and it turns to stone immediately. And then Hades shows up and we've had this whole lead up where it's like, hey, when you kill the Kraken, Hades will be weakened enough to kill him and get revenge for your family that he killed. And then Hades is like, you can't kill me, I'm a god! And then uh, he, throws, he throws Zeus's sword at him and Hades just goes back to the underworld and is not dead and nothing is satisfied and everyone doesn't make any sense because their whole movie got rewritten and reshot under their own noses. Hades has played pretty well, though. So is Zeus. So is Poseidon for his two lions. Poseidon had a much larger role and was basically written out of the movie. You see a lot of the gods. Olympus is well done. The gods are well done. It's a shame that none of them are in the movie because the whole movie is about Zeus versus Hades. But I really don't hate Clash of the Titans. I kind of dug it. And I kind of hope someone out there kind of digs it, too. Regardless of its unfortunate castrations. I should close this up now because I'm rambling, but eh, I, I, there are worse movies to see, and this one was so hypothetically good, I just, I, I feel bad to really come down on it hard.
I come down, and I come down heavy-handed on the jerks who mangled and mutilated what could have been a better movie, but the movie itself is like a wounded, graceful beast. I think I better finish my chow mein before it gets cold. Oh, broccoli! I love broccoli!